Now I put the steel plate back in. So you have the, uh, the steel plate right there and you have the aluminum plate on the other side which I haven't changed. Still have the light bulb wired in series. I'm going to plug it back in. I cannot stress to you enough how dangerous this is. You're doing everything that they tell you not to do with electricity. You're running house current through essentially through salt water. Uh, if this shit spills on you, you may have a problem. You know, there's a lot of juice going through this little container of water. So, whenever you change connections, be damn sure that you unplug whatever you're working on from the outlet. So, I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in. Alright, we're plugged in. I have a switch that I rigged up obviously and I'll show you what happens we're gonna do half wave rectification now so you got a hundred watt bulb it's gonna be running on half the AC wave it's only gonna be pulsing the positive the negative wave through here and the positive wave from the steel plate I know I have red on the aluminum and black on the steel that means nothing they're just scrap wires that I'm using to, sh to illustrate this, uh, you know, I'm not really not trying to be that accurate here, but uh, let me show you what happens. The 100 watt bulb is only only going to light to about half its brightness because it's only receiving half the electricity in in time. It's only receiving half the half the frequency, so you're going to get half the brightness which theoretically is half the power if you look at power over time because you're you're basically getting a, a 50 percent duty cycle from the uh... from the mains a, instead of a straight current because i mean yes it's ac but it's on all the time if it's not rectified once you rectify it um, you're only getting half of the signal so let me show you how that works so now you notice you get plenty of bubbles off there with half wave rectification see you get a nice amount of bubbles and the closer you put that plate to the steel the more bubbles you get but I'll tell you right now I've had one of these little setups running for about Oh, a few hours straight and eventually the aluminum precipitates some kind of white sludge I'd call it I don't know what to call it it precipitates something into the electrolyte which may be a problem but it only happens if you have if you have the aluminum plate very close to the uh, the steel plate be it stainless steel or whatever the other plate is made of it has to be something that is has a different electric charge on its molecules so that it'll pass the the positive half of the wave so let me try to move it closer for a second turn it off as always unplug it remove the uh, aluminum plate a little closer to the steel plate and try to make them even Try to evenly space them. See how close we can get. I don't want to get them too close. Let me just turn it on. Alright, so I'll turn it on. And it's actually not putting out that much more gas, to be honest with you. I mean, it's putting out a little bit more gas. So. Technically, that's good that it's not putting out much more because you don't really want to use aluminum as your plate material because it has a tendency to degrade. And if you're just using it to rectify the current, then you really don't want gas production because the rectifier will be something separate. So, 
can see it really doesn't change. I mean, it seems to increase the amount of gas coming off of the steel plate. But as far as the aluminum plate, it's really putting off about the same amount of gas. It's still a really cool thing. I'll show you how you can definitely increase the gas production without changing the plate arrangement. I'm going to turn it off for a second again. Unplug it. And I'm simply going to change the light bulb. So, instead of using a 100 watt bulb, I'm going to use a 200 watt bulb. Now don't get me wrong, I know that this circuit is not expending 100 watts in the cell. 